So for today, March 27th, Friday, we reread The Big Dipper. And we are going to complete um, task 14. But for parents, um, I have already asked the questions during our second read of The Big Dipper. But with those questions, if you want to freeze the frame and read along with those questions and answers, that way you just kind of know what those expectations are, what your child should be answering. Um, there weren't as many questions this time, so you can just freeze those screens and check out those answers to help guide and make sure that your child is understanding what is being asked. And so we're gonna look at task 14 that goes with the Big Dipper. So today's task, task 14 in your field notes, earth science notebook or journal packet. It says part one, fold a piece of paper in half twice. So if this were my piece of paper, I would fold it in half and then I would fold that in half again. So that's going to, the folds will create four boxes on your paper. You're gonna label the first three, summer, um, winter, and fall. In those three boxes, you are going to draw pictures of the Big Dipper, of what the Big Dipper looks like in summer, winter, and fall. Then you're gonna tell a family member about your drawings and explain the position of the Big Dipper and how it's the Big Dipper and how it is different from summer, winter, to fall. What changes? Be sure to use information from the text, words, and illustrations to help you draw these stars accurately. And then in part two, in the fourth box, you're going to write a response to the following prompt. Does <clears throat> the Big Dipper have an observable pattern? So is it a pattern that we can observe and see happen over time? If so, how is this pattern similar to other patterns that we have talked about in this unit, like the day and night pattern or the changes of our seasons, um, the position of the earth. Um, so use that connection in box four to answer those questions. Your writing should include a topic, at least two facts about the topic, vocabulary and a sense of closure. So for the parents um, and the students, I wanted to show an example of what that might look like. Sorry, it's the only paper I had, so ignore the border. But I folded it in half, and then in half again, and I got my four boxes. One, two, three, four. So I put, I labeled it summer, winter, fall, and then I rewrote the prompt questions, but you do not have to do that in that box. Um, just so long as you use that box to write your prompt answers. So once I labeled that, I went back with a different color pen to show you what that response should actually look like in each box. So for summer, the handle should be pointing up and the bowl, um, should be pointing down. In the winter, they should be, sorry, the bowl should be pointing up. In the fall, it is very low in the sky. You might not even be able to see it because it sits so low. And then a response to the writing prompt part of it, um, a suggested or quality response would sound something like the Big Dipper's position in the sky makes a pattern. We can predict how the Big Dipper will look if we know what season it is. The pattern is like sunshine and the seasons. If we know what season it is, we can predict how much sunshine there will be. We can observe many patterns in the sky. 
So there's your example of the task today. Um, if you have any other questions, just let me know.